Does fasting burn your muscle? No, absolutely not. Remember that what you eat and how much muscle you build are two completely separate things and they barely interact at all. When you eat, you're taking food energy or calories and your body is going to burn those calories and it's going to store the rest. And it can store it in two ways, either as glucose, which is a form of sugar, and as fat. And when you're not eating or fasting, then your body will take those stored calories back out from storage so that you can use. And it's going to take it in the form that it was stored that is either from the sugar or the fat. It doesn't take it from the protein because the protein is functional tissue. That has nothing to do with muscle growth. How do you grow muscle? Well, exercise. If I could just eat and grow muscle, we'd all be like Superman. Proteins are made up of smaller building blocks called amino acids. And it will use a little bit of the amino acids to replace what's needed, but then the rest is going to get stored as either glucose or it can also be turned into fat. So that's it. Don't confuse the two. When you're eating, that's going to store calories as sugar or fat or going to take it out. When you're exercising, you're going to build muscle. When your body breaks down the protein, it will recycle most of those amino acids, those building blocks. Now this is not to say that eating a higher protein diet is not good for weight loss. Some people find it's very, very useful because of the high satiety factor of protein. So I'm not saying that you shouldn't eat it, but during fasting, you really don't need a lot of it. The estimated uh, turnover of proteins and amino acids in a day is 210 because our body is constantly breaking down cells and renewing them. However, when they break down these amino acids, most of that can be taken back. So there is a small amount, mostly in the fingernails, the hair and intestinal lining, but that's only about six to eight grams per day. That's about the weight of two of those small packets of sugar. Very, very little uh, protein is actually lost in a day. To make up those amino acids, you might need about 30 or 40 uh, grams of dietary protein. Um, but the average American is eating somewhere closer to 80 to 100 grams. So most of us are getting three times the amount of protein that is actually necessary. So what happens to that extra protein? Well, 19 out of the 20 amino acids have been shown to that can be converted into sugar. So when they did the studies using isotope dil uh, dilution, what they did is they took healthy men, they gave them their average diet, and then looked to see how much of this protein became deaminated, which is the taking off the nitrogen, because that's where it gets turned into glucose. And it turns out that about 68% of the ingested protein turns into glucose doesn't go into the blood, a lot of it is stored in the cells. And a more recent study, such as this one, showed that 79% of the ingested protein were actually turned into glucose. So there's lots of these longevity experts who are saying that you gotta eat more protein, more protein, more protein. But your body doesn't need that much protein and it can't actually handle that much protein. And how are you gonna grow muscle by eating anyway? If you wanna grow muscle, you need to exercise, but people are so desperate to believe that eating protein can build muscle that they're suckered into buying all kinds of things like protein powders and so on. The recommended daily allowance of protein, which is the uh, government's way of saying this is how much protein you should eat per day, is 0 0.8 grams per kilogram per day, where most Americans are eating 1.2 to 1.5, and the longevity experts are saying you should eat two or more. Why do people say that fasting causes loss of muscle? First of all, muscle is approximately 76% water by weight. Therefore, any changes in the water, including the intracellular glycogen, are going to affect how much is measured as muscle. When you measure body fat percentage, there's two standard ways to do it. One is called the BIA, or Bioelectrical Impedance Analysis, and that uses an uh, electrical pulse, 
and it sends it around the body and these are like the scales or where you hold it and it sends a small pulse of electricity and it, and there's a difference in the body's resistance to that electrical pulse because it passes more easily through water and lean tissue compared to fat. The problem here is that water and lean tissue look the same. So if you're doing something where you're going to lose body water, such as fasting, well, it looks like you're losing lean tissue because the way that it's calculated assumes a constant water uh, percentage. The other way they do it is a DEXA scan, which is dual energy x-ray absorbimetry. And this is a little bit more accurate because it measures five types of tissue, water, protein, bone, mineral, and car uh, sorry, bone mineral, carbohydrate, and fat. And the body fat is calculated by taking your body mass and subtracting the water, protein, bone, and carbohydrate. So in other words, if you're losing water, you could just as well be losing lean mass because you assume that bone and carbohydrate are the same. So again, it's because of the way it's calculated, you're assuming that water is steady, where actually you're losing water, you're confusing that water loss with lean tissue loss. And this is what we see clinically too. When people do these DEXA scans or so on and they start fasting, they're, 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 they're shocked and horrified to see that, oh, their lean mass has gone down by five pounds. They'll say, oh, I lost five pounds of muscle. It's like, how can you lose five pounds of muscle in one day? And then when they start to eat again, it's like, oh, my muscle went back up. It's like, duh, you never lost muscle. You lost water. It's the way that it's measured, either through BIA or DEXA. What you need to do, of course, is measure muscular strength. And really, this is the best study that did this. And what they did was a 10-day fast. Okay, so not short, but not a water-only fast. They had about 200 to 250 calories per day and done in the Buchinger Wilhelmi Clinic in Germany, which is a well-known fasting clinic. And what happened during these 10 days of fasting? Well, you can see that the body weight came down, as did the waist circumference. So that's expected. So that's good. And then when they refed, some of the weight came back up, but not all of it. And at three months follow-up, you see a lot of the weight uh, went back on, which shows you, as expected, that if you don't keep it up, then your weight is going to go back up. So no surprises there. But what happened to strength? Not a measurement of uh, muscle, how much muscle you have, but actual strength. Well, they did three tests. This is the maximal grip strength. And they did a baseline, and then they did uh, five days, five, 10 days. They tested that refeeding and follow-up. And you can see there's absolutely no difference, no difference at all in the muscular strength over 10 days of fasting. And most people are not doing 10 days. So it's really hard to imagine that you're losing muscle if your grip strength stays exactly the same. And here's where it gets even more interesting because they tested leg strength. So they, um, when they, you compare the baseline to a fasted, leg strength went up. Not just up a little bit, it went up a lot. It's up like 30%. And if you look at the leg muscle power, as measured how much power you can generate with your legs, it's gone up significantly higher with the fasting. Now, I don't think you're building muscle that quickly. I think it's because of the hormonal changes. That is, you're going to increase your sympathetic tone, which is going to make your muscles work uh, better uh, because you're stimulating that. And I think that's what causes a strength. But certainly, we're not looking at a catastrophic muscle loss like all these internet uh, gurus are saying. Then you can measure the time to climb 40 steps. And again, this measures how much strength you have because it takes muscle to climb. And once again, you see that there's no difference over 10 days of fasting. But as you start to refeed, in fact, your time gets better. So you're actually building muscle. So on refeeding day three, you're actually doing it better than you ever had. And at follow up. That could be because you're a bit lighter as well. So there's a bit of, um, of uh, confounding there. But in either case, it certainly does not <laughs> suggest that you're losing uh, muscle mass. 
The other interesting thing about this study is that they looked at the hunger during this 10 day fast and what they, uh, and what they asked them was how hungry are you and uh, how much do you think you can eat? And during the 10 day fast, in fact, over the first five days anyway, you saw a very significant drop in hunger which is different than what most people think. Most people think they're gonna be overwhelmed with hunger, but in fact, the hunger actually steadily drops and then goes back to baseline once you started. And I'll also mention one very important uh, type of uh, muscle, heart muscle, and there's a recent study just published in 2024, which is the Interfast MI study, which looked at people after a heart attack, a significant heart attack, and they had a group that did some fasting and a group that did not. And what they found was that the people who had actually fasted had much better improvement in their heart function. That heart muscle wasn't being eaten away by the fasting. In fact, the hormonal changes actually caused an improvement, a significantly better improvement after a heart attack than the people who didn't fast. I'll see you next time.